So we're going to be looking at the actually the second epistle of Thessalonians and um, we're going to look at several passages in this uh, three chapter uh, epistle. Paul is in Sylvanius and Timotheus under the church of Thessalonians in God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God, and your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. For also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together with him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as of the day of Christ, is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall come, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know that what withholdeth, that he might uh, be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity hath already worked, only he who is now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brother and beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the attaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. Um, Now, I'm 
I just want to make some comments on these two uh, chapters. Paul is um, declaring the sovereignty of God in these two passages of Scripture. He's proclaiming the sovereignty of God in salvation. He's giving all the glory to God. He's redefining the gospel. And he is uh, stating what is going to happen uh, as the time draws to its close uh, before the return of Christ. And he also indicates that those who are in Christ are going to be suffering persecution and tribulations and God is going to use that to glorify himself and increase our faith. And he says that these people that are um, troubling us, he will recon recompense tribulation to them. And then he also says that he, the Lord will, Jesus will be revealed from heaven with mighty his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is he speaking about when he says that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is God's gospel? Well, God's gospel is that the Father hath given to the Son a people. He's regenerated them. He's called them. He's justified them. He's glorified them. And it's all a work of God. That is the gospel. And he says, those that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. And it says, and he shall be come to be glorified in his saints. Um, and he says, to all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So, he says that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified according to the grace of our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, what is this uh, uh, next chapter, this warning about those who um, are going to be deceived with lying wonders and, and, um, and, who, and, and this this one who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so, so that he as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. What's he talking about here? Well, he's talking about those who would deny God's sovereignty over all. He's talking about those that would raise themselves up and give them self-glory in contradistinction to God. That's what he's talking about, because he said that they oppose it and exalt themselves above all that is called God, and that is worshipped. So that as God says in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, now, there's no better example of that than the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope who calls himself the Vicar of Christ. But he's talking here of anyone who is in opposition to the sovereignty of God, who denies that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords in their life. And he says the mystery of iniquity that's already worked. He says that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the work, working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonderness, wonders. <laughs> and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and in that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. What's he talking about? The love of the truth. Well, 
you know, anyone that doesn't love the doctrine of Christ, the fact that Jesus Christ from eternity made a covenant with the Father and the Son that He would come and He would die for His people and that He would, uh, in Him, all the, His seed would be justified and that He would die on a, on a cross for His people and He would pay the ransom for His people. And this was done before the foundation of the world. And He predestinated us, He called us, He justified us, He glorified us. Anybody that doesn't believe that gospel, it says they receive not the truth that they might be saved. And so there's a result for their unbelief. It says, for this God cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. <clears throat> now, what is the lie that they will believe? Well, the lie that they're going to believe is something other than the truth. The truth is revealed in the Word of God. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate. And those whom he predestinated, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What should we say that to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Um, and it says that uh, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Well, here he says those that deny that, those that deny that work of God, um, it says that they will, uh, they will, God's going to send them strong delusions, but they're going to believe a lie. Well, the lie is the lie of free will. You know, I can do something. I have to accept Jesus Christ. I, I, I. There was a time when I made a decision for Christ. There was a time when I did this and I did that. That's the lie. That is those that are having pleasure in unrighteousness. Because they're believing the lie of free will. They're believing the Billy Grahams and the Robert Schuler's and the, uh, those that uh, want to promote this lie. But he makes a distinction here. He says, We are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. From the beginning, before we were born, he, he made this decision for his people. It wasn't something we did. That had nothing to do with us. Wherein too he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. And he says that the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the God, even our Father which has loved us, has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. He always goes back to the grace of God. The unmerited favor of God had nothing to do with us. And he says that we should comfort our hearts and establish us in every good work and, bre and uh, uh, word and work. So that uh, are we, the question that we should be asking ourselves this morning is, uh, have we believed the lie? Have we uh, denied the gospel? Have we received not the love of the truth that we might be saved? Are we uh, believing? Have we been sent strong delusion that we should believe a lie? To believe not the truth? Or do we believe the truth that God has from the beginning chosen us to salvation 
through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Do we believe that He's called us uh, through the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ? Are we holding to the traditions which we have been taught through the Bible, and through the epistles? Are we holding to the doctrine of the of the uh, apostles, or have we denied it? Um, he says here that uh, there are going to be those that are going to persecute us because of our stand for this gospel. And he, he tells us that um, the reason they're going to come against it is that they are uh, exalting themselves above all that is called God and that is worshipped. And that they're actually sitting in the temple of God showing themselves that they're God. And uh, he also tells us that um, that Satan is behind this. He's working with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and then the perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And he tells us that God is going to send them strong delusions a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Have we believed the lie? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. Are we walking in the truth of the gospel? He says that all of those that have been sent this strong delusion that are believing the lie, uh, the purpose of this is that they should be damned who believe not the truth but at pleasure in unrighteousness. If we take on our own righteousness, if we oppose and exalt ourselves above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that we're sitting in the temple of God, portraying that we ourselves are God, in other words, uh, that we had anything to do with our salvation, and God will not show his, share his glory with anyone else. He says, I will not share my glory with another. If we're not giving God all the glory in the work of salvation, then we are opposing and exalting ourselves above God. And we are walking in deceivableness, and, and we are in a very grave state, my friend. So we need to examine ourselves to make certain that we are in the faith, that we are in the truth of the gospel. And uh, we need to hold to what we've been taught in the epistles. Paul felt the need to talk about this, the fact that those that are denying the truth of the gospel, that he from the beginning chose us to the salvation and sanctification. He, need, he warns us about this, so we need to take heed and continue to search in his word, and uh, we'll find that the truth of God is clearly revealed uh, from Genesis to Revelation regarding the power and the sovereignty of God in these things.